it's probably for the first three years of uni, I was just lying to myself. And I'm yeah. sitting in this lectures, and they're like, who read the financial review this week? And everyone puts their hand up. Mate, I went surfing that, that morning <laughs> and filmed with my friends, you know? So I was just living this life. Welcome to Beyond the Beers. Men breaking a stereotype through conversation. We men love a good yarn, some banter, even better over a beer or tea. Sadly for many men, it never goes deeper than that. This show is a place for men to go beyond the surface level conversations, a chance to learn, listen, laugh, and grow. I'm your host, Mike Campbell, man coach and author of Amazon bestseller for men's health, Unleash Your Alpha. Let's break stereotypes through conversation. Let's go beyond the beers. I'm your host, Mike Campbell, and today I have with me Scott Tweedy. TV host and, as I'm calling him, professional prankster. Good to have you here, buddy. Mikey, professional prankster, I love it. I did like a kid show for four years and now. Everyone thinks I'm pranking them all the time. I'll do it today. <laughs> <laughs> what, is this beer? Is this actually beer? Is this what you got? So, Scott and I met last year when we both went to Cambodia with the charity organization Project Futures uh, to raise funds and awareness in the fight against human trafficking. Now that was a grueling um, but amazingly rewarding trip for me for many reasons and one of them because of the connections uh, and friendships that I made. Um, none more present than Mr. Scott Tweedy himself. Um, someone that I instantly um, fell in like with, um, incredibly friendly, um, genuine and totally personable um, which clearly worked on me, that's why he's sitting here today. So, um, Scott, without further ado, should we get into the show? Mate, let's do it. Hit me with the hardest questions you've got, Mike, and you see if you can crack me. All right, so welcome to the show, mate. Uh, it's great to have you here, obviously. So, I'd like to start by you know, getting a little bit more um, about you. Some of the audience may not be that aware of you. Yep. Some may, but they see the Scott that they see on TV. So, can you give us a little brief how you spend your time and how you make an impact? Yeah, well, I suppose TV is one thing. You, you know, you've got your hair, your makeup, and all the glitz and the glam. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, and I, I try and make myself 100% genuine on screen with TV. But it's it's hard to do sometimes when you're just talking about music and movies or pranking kids. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more to me. But my mission in the next, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty years is to just still 100% be myself and be the sort of person that I want. Like you know, when I meet role models of myself, I want them to be. So it's like if I'm in a pub or I'm in a, a grocery store and someone's seen me on telly, I want them to feel comfortable to come up to me and be like, hey mate, how are you? And have a chat with me. So that's sort of my 100% mission. I think that comes right back to how I was brought up with my parents and my sisters, a you know, really nice family, great um, values in our family, definitely weren't a well-off family, so I've worked my ass off to get to where I'm at today, like mm -hmm. where I'm at in this position. But yeah, it's just about being a, a genuine good bloke, I think, and that's sort of my 100% mission and, and I hopefully people get to know that and when I meet people that's definitely my mission to show them that's the sort of person I am. Very cool, very nice and I think absolutely I personally pick up on that um, in dealing with you but also the videos that you put out on social media and stuff I, I think we get the real you and that's one of the things that you know attracted me to you I suppose in terms of our friendship when we were um, getting covered in mud and having sore asses cycling oh, through Cambodia. <laughs> mate and the dehydration as well I spewed one day so uh, that was hard, hard stuff on the bikes but no look there's a lot of bullshit in the industry I'm in and there's a lot yeah. of um, you know fake personalities a lot of yeah. people that are just in the game to become famous like my goal is not to become famous but my goal is to um, definitely become like a household name to become more of a leader and like yeah. to, to be a voice to great organizations like you know Project Futures like that's that's a terrible thing that's happening in the world and it's a human problem like sex and human trafficking I've got two older sisters like I couldn't even begin to imagine if mum or dad sold my sisters to a brothel when they're yeah. like you know they you saw it in Cambodia how yeah. young the girls were it's like six seven eight year olds like 40 year old Westerners go over there to sleep with them. Like it's disgusting. So my mission is to really, you know, use entertainment, put smiles on people's faces and sort of break away from how much serious stuff is in the world today. So yeah. I think there's always a space for that, you know, sigh of relief, take the piss out of myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then fingers crossed, build my profile to then bring action to, to areas in this world that need action. Very nice. And you're obviously doing that to some degree. But thanks for sharing about um, the industry that you're in. Because, you know, from the outside, I suppose, a lot of people can probably think that that's the case. Oh, maybe there's a lot of fake people and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm interested to delve into that a little bit and how you deal with that. Is that something that you remove yourself from? 
or is it something that you kind of lean into in terms of, you know, one, you try and be genuine yourself, but do you avoid those situations and people? Do you kind of talk about that, confront? Is there, is there a way that you actually address that stuff? Yeah, look, I'm, I'd love to sit here right now and be like, no, I'm 100% myself, but I'd be, I'd be lying to myself and to people out there. Like, there's part of me that has to play the game and, you know, yep. you've got to climb the ladder. And, you know, I'm here and I want to be here and there's a long way to go. So it's about, you've also got to respect people that are in higher positions than you, even if you don't believe what they're about. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, in any opportunity I can just sort of break away from the norm and, and be a genuine human being yeah. um, and, you know, bring across my morals and values, I 100% will do that. So yeah. it is interesting, you know, I meet the biggest celebs in the world to interview them. Mind you, don't be fooled. When you do interviews on TV, you get about seven to ten minutes in a hotel room with them. So you don't really get that much time with them. Yeah. But 99% of them are actually all really nice, genuine people. So... I haven't come across too many wankers and too many people where I'm like, God, you're terrible. Um, so it's, it's actually surprised yeah. me cool. that the industry isn't too bad yeah. um, in that regard. So a lot of people, maybe it's just in Australia, like in America, it could be a different league as yeah, well. Yeah. So it's, it's surprised me in my seven years of being in the industry how good it is so far. But you've just got to play the game as well in some areas and also put up with the crap in other areas. Yeah. I can understand that. So you obviously uh, enjoy making people laugh, pranks, right? And being yourself and bringing that into the world. So then on the flip of that, are there conversations and things that you perhaps struggle to talk about in your own life or maybe you know, in your public life? Look, I do struggle to have conversations sometimes and, and my job is conversations. So <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, I, there's moments where I reflect on whether it's one day, a week ago, a year ago, where I was like, damn, I wish I kind of spoke up in that scenario. Like, there's a few moments you know, when I was at school and you could have seen a kid getting bullied and you just don't do anything about it. And yeah. like, it's, it's so much easier to, to look back on that and go, mm -hmm. I should have done something, but that, that does still sit with me some days where you're like, oh, I could have made a difference, yeah. but I didn't, but I'm gonna learn from that. And now moving forward okay. in my life, you know, work towards standing up for what I believe in and, and yeah. voicing my opinion. Um, just an example the other day at work, which is um, a hard one, and I do lots of different productions, so I can't tell you where and which production it was, but, you know, a, a person in a higher position um, put a girl in like an uncomfortable position, almost like a, putting her down because she was a girl in front of like a, a crew of guys. And it 100% should have been a scenario where I should have stood up for it. Yeah. But I was worried about losing my own job if I did that. Yeah. And so I think it's, for me, it's having conversations now about those sort of things and yeah. going, there's got to be a line here where I've got to not care so much about what's in it for me and, and do the right thing for, yeah. for everyone involved, especially women, because, you know, once again, with you and I being connected to Project Futures and men being a problem in this yeah. world with like, you know, being the demand and supply for, for strippers, for yeah, prostitutes, for, for all that sort of yeah. stuff, we have to help the girls out as well. Like, yeah. you know, so it's, it's us that has to voice our opinion. Absolutely. So for me, not having conversations about those sorts of things when I should be yeah. is a definite area in my life I want to work on. Yeah. Um, on more of a personal level, I suppose yeah. just my mates day to day, like we, I talk up a storm with them, but I suppose I don't dive into those areas like yeah. just, hey, like, you know, your mum might be sick, how are you going with that? And, and digging into more personal conversations yeah. with people, I suppose that's an area in my life I don't talk about enough. So... Do you have an awareness to like what really drives you, kind of your core drivers? Mate, my brain speaks to me 24-7, hey. Like even when I go to bed, my best ideas are next to my bed at night. But I do have an awareness and it's um, and now like in, only in the last couple of years I've sort of defined it. Mm -hmm. And I've got like a filter which I run everything through and I'm like, is this what I want out of this world? Like is this what I want to be the best of me? Is this going to make me the best presenter and the best person in Australia and in the world? So I am very aware now of what, what does that. Every now and then I let my guard down, but we all have to do that. That's just being human, yeah. you know, and you're like, you might even just have a big night out and you're like, <laughs> oh, mate, you really shouldn't have done this or that. But that's, that's part yeah. of being human. But I am aware of where yeah. I want to go to. And that took a long time to define. I'm only 28, which is still in male years. That's bloody young. Like, you're I'm just, exactly. It's <laughs> all the guys are like, you're a bloody kid. So I'm still redefining it. Yeah. You know, I could probably Absolutely. talk to you in five more years, but... I think it is important and I think a lot of guys, a lot of my friends that I see that are in these corporate worlds that are in these, you know, nine till fives, but you don't even, they're probably seven till 11 p.m. jobs. 
I don't think they've got theirs defined at the moment. They're just, they're just sort of following a system that they think is the right way to go. And they yeah. are following a paycheck, which is the right way to go. But I don't see satisfaction in their lives yeah. and in themselves. And I would love them to be in the position I'm in right now, which is like, you know what? I'm feeling good about where I'm going and I'm not yeah. scared to take these risks. And yeah. I think... I just want to sort of try and share that with them, which is exactly what you're doing with guys out there, which is getting them to talk and discover yeah. who they are. Cool. And so, you know, because obviously it's very easy to generalize the nine to five or seven to 11 or whatever. Yeah. But the, the key difference there that you're talking about really is about purpose, right? You've got purpose in what you do. And, you know, as long as someone has purpose, right, and then they know what that is providing for them, I think is a very important point. All right, so we've spoken about success and a little bit about perhaps those conditioned masculine measures of success around sex and money and so on. So, let me ask you, as a 28-year-old male who's been through a few things and so on, this is obviously something we love to talk about here on the show. So, how would you define what it means to be a man today? All right, I think being a, a man today has all the things that we all know what it means to be a man today. So that's, you know, treating women with respect, um, treating yourself with respect. Yep. Um, and I suppose, you know, having a clear idea of what's right and wrong, I think that's a huge uh, definition of what it is to being a man. But I'll put it like probably in an example that we can all relate to and, and use successful sportsmen. But I find that the ones that are a, a man to me are the guys like Novak Djokovic, right? You know, he's number one in the world. But taking all that away, there's a person there that you can see deep down wants to help the world, yep. give his time up, um, wants to basically make this place a better place and like help people out as well. And even on a small scale, you can look at a guy that works at y your school, right? And he's there giving up his time to sort of basically educate people and make the world a better place, um, define what is right and wrong. I think that's what's being a man more so than having a big fast car, having a nice suit, having a hot wife, yeah. um, and also you know, ignoring all these emotions. I think, especially in 2016, and how much like suicide is, is you know, present yeah. in our society, Absolutely. and the pressures of, of Instagram, Facebook, you see all these glamorous lives, and you're like, sometimes, like, I flick through feeds, and I'm like, how the hell is that person on holidays? How do <laughs> they afford to go to Europe every single summer, and blah, 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 yeah. blah, and it messes with your head a lot. Yeah. So I think it's like cutting all that crap away and just having conversations. Um, to be a man, I think you need to tick all those boxes. I still believe though, and, and this could be a very traditional way that I've been brought up, but when I have a wife, I want to be the provider in the house. But mm -hmm. I think her job can be bigger than mine. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to be the one earning more money. She could earn more money than me. Like that's not, it's not about the money, but it's about... A wife is there and when she has a child, I want her to like nurture the child and look after the kids and we grow them together. But I want to be in a position where I can provide for the whole household. So I yep. still th see that as being a man, you know, looking yep. after the house and goes back to the farming days, you know, bringing back the produce. And then um, that, that's just what I still believe yep. as being a man. But yep. twisting it into 2016, which is, you know, a lot of my bosses are women. Yep. Um, so it's, it's equality in the world yep. as well. So And I think it's men have got to wake up to that fact if they're still living Absolutely. in those old days where it's like, you know, footy, fishing, and, you know, the men and the women are in the kitchen. Those yeah. days are 100 years, 200, 300 years old now. Yeah. It's, it's like ha seeing equality for what it is and bringing out those best of values and the best of values of yourself. Absolutely. Does that make any sense at all? Yeah, very nice. Well, look, what I'm getting from that is, one, be a real human being who yeah. isn't just self-centered but does care and respect for himself but also cares and looks out for and attempts to you know, make the people around his, uh, his life better, their life better. And, uh, you know, we are providers. So it is a masculine role to be the hunter, so to speak. That's the, an evolutionary thing. Um, one of the things that I think is a very important um, distinction, perhaps, from the traditional provider in terms of the Industrial Revolution Age, which is money and provide, is providing a space for the family, providing the space for your children to grow up and have a healthy upbringing. Yep. For your wife to have emotional health and whatever it may be, right? And, and that's kind of what I'm getting from your definition and from you in general. So leaving the conversation now that's in your head, what do you think is the bigger conversation that needs to be had and are you having it? I think it's just more aware of the people around me. Yeah. Um, and, and as you said, what's the bigger conversation? Well, the bigger conversation for me is initiating that conversation 
with people that need to have that conversation. Yeah. That's a lot of conversations, <laughs> one sentence. But I think it's, you know, stopping and just going, forget about your own life for once and just start thinking about the people around you and seeing if, you know, there's ways you can help them out yeah. and there's ways that you can assist if they're in a sticky situation at the moment. And in return, that's actually going to build on what I talked about before as being success for me. Yeah. yeah. So having those conversations with other people, finding out where their weaknesses are and then seeing if I can assist it all will in turn help me out as well. Well, mate, thanks for opening up and getting into that. Yeah, that was cool. And thank you for, for being here today and really um, giving us a window into the real Scott Tweedy. It's been great, so thank you. Thanks for tuning into this short version of the show. To watch the full interview, click on the link below and go to beyondthebears.tv. There, you can sign in to watch the rest of the episodes for free, as well as all the episodes of the show. Otherwise, make sure you share this episode with at least one man you think will enjoy or benefit from it. Now go out into your own life and start having these more meaningful conversations. Ask for help. Ask a mate how he's really doing. Or if he just wants to have a real conversation and go beyond the beers.